Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about compound inequalities. Now, if you're looking for a straightforward inequality on a number line, where if they give you something like, you know, say like 2x plus 15 is greater than 30 and they're wanting you to graph this on a number line, that is a separate video. Link is in the description below. This is the next step up. This is when you have compound inequalities when you're dealing with generally two inequalities at the same time. So we're going to start with some number lines and graphing just the straightforward combinations of and and or with simple inequalities. And then we're going to move to the next step of doing some algebra first before we graph these inequalities. Just, this is just to get you used to the terminology and how this is going to work. So the two big words to look for are and or, those two words. If you get them mixed up, you're going to get the wrong answer. This is very critical. They're going to be and inequalities where you have two inequalities and you're told this and that. Other option, this or that. And here's what those mean. So let's say I had x is greater than 2. And I graph that to graph an greater than, that is an open circle. And greater than means I go to the right. So that would be x is greater than 2. Now let's say I had x is less than or equal to 5. That would mean a closed circle at 5 and the less than, because that closed circle means less for the less than or equal to or greater than or equal to's. And because it's less than, I go to the left. So those are my two baseline inequalities. Now I want to combine those into this third number line. Now let's say they told us to graph on this third number line where x is greater than 2 and x is less than or equal to 5. That means only numbers that are highlighted on both number lines. So let's say negative 3. Is negative 3 highlighted on both number lines? No. It's highlighted here, but it is not highlighted there. How about 7? No, because it's highlighted here, but it is not highlighted there. So we only want to represent that section of numbers that are on both number lines. So down here on my third number line, I would have that open circle at 2, that closed circle at 5, and I would connect them and that would be my answer. Now what if they had said, or x is greater than 2, or x is less than or equal to 5. Now it's anything that's on either number line. So it's actually going to be the entire number line because they overlap. So if I, because look here, if I started that solid five and went to the left and then I had an open at two and went to the right, they overlap, every number is covered. Now you may be wondering, why don't I have an open circle here at two? Well, that's because two is covered in this one. It's not covered in this one. It goes right up to two, but isn't two but two is included in the second number line, so I highlight it in the third. So it's an or, it's any number that is on either number line. The other or you might see is something like this, x is greater than two, or x is less than negative four. Well, if x is greater than two, it would be an open circle at two going to the right. x is less than negative four, open circle at negative four going to the left. So the or is any spot, any number that's on either of these. So my final answer, I would just include both of those. So that's represented. Now, what if it had said and, and this does come up sometimes, if it said x is greater than two and x is less than negative four, there isn't any number. As you can see, there is no overlap between these two number lines, number lines one and two. So my final answer is nothing. I don't highlight anything. And think about this, not in terms of number lines, but just what you know about numbers. You can see this is true. 
Is there any number that's bigger than two, but less than negative four? No, of course not, because negative four is far less than two. So anything less than negative four would also be less than two and not greater than two. So that's our first stage where they just give you, they kind of provide them in their simplified form where just X is greater than or less than something. And you have two of them and an or. So now let's move up to the next level, which is where they start adding equations to the mix and you have to do a little algebra. So here's one I got from a student. R plus five is greater than or equal to 12 or R over nine or R divided by nine is less than zero. So now you're just going to do this as a standard sort of solve for R, solving this inequality. And if you'd like a refresher on this, I'm going to cover the basics, but if you'd like a more detailed refresher, I do have a, another video on this. Link is below. So for this one, the first side to get R by itself, I subtract five from both sides and I get R is greater than or equal to seven. On the other side, I have R divided by nine is less than zero. So I'm just going to rewrite it again so I have a little more room. So I'm going to multiply by nine on both sides. It doesn't, I'm running off the page here. And so that way I get that R is less than zero. Now, something to note, you don't have to draw three number lines out. And as you get more skilled, you probably won't need to, but I'm just going to do it again. You know, you're probably going to jump right to this final number line, but I'm going to do it again just to, you know, let you see what's really going on here. So R is greater than or equal to seven have a closed circle at seven and it goes to the right. R is less than zero. That is an open circle at zero and it goes to the left or means anything that appears on either of these number lines. So my final answer, the one I'm going to submit is going to include both of these things. And that would be my final answer. Something that's going to come up with the and problems is there's another way of writing it. They may give it just like this where they have the two equations and then they have and written in between them. They also like to do where they combine that they combine it into one. So here's an example of that. Negative three is less than or equal to P over two is less than zero. Oh, they love doing this. Once it gets combined like that, that can like have some students going, what, what, what is this? How do I graph this? You do this, you separate into two separate equations and you deal with them separately. And it's just like you were doing the other problems. There's no change. So our first one, we have negative three is less than or equal to P divided by two. The other side, we have P divided by two is less than zero. And then you just treat them as individual problems. So the one on the left here, I'm going to multiply both sides by two. Two times negative three is six. On the right hand side, same thing. I'm going to multiply by two and I get P is less than zero times two is zero. And now I graph these. Negative six is less than or equal to P is the same thing. I can flip that as long as I flip the sign in the middle. P is greater than or equal to negative six. So that would be a closed circle, excuse me, that's positive six. So that would be a closed circle at negative six. And I'd be going to the right because it's greater than. Not great at highlighting that, I know, but I want you to be able to see it. And the other one, P is less than zero, an open circle at zero and going to the left for that less than. Since this is an and, it's only solutions that fit both of these number lines. So it would be a closed circle at negative six, an open circle at zero, and a line connecting the two of them. So again, if you have this combined, this is an and problem, just separate them into the left side and the right side equations and solve from there. Now, most of these compound inequalities are not going to get into the more complicated you know, solving for X type of algebra problems, like things that include square roots or X squared, things like that. Generally not. Usually they sort of max out at uh, things that 
are adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing to solve things like what I'm writing here on the screen. So if you have these down pat, you should be pretty good on these. Of course, every school, every teacher is different. You may come across a more complicated one. They're just not that common. This is usually how far they go for these compound inequalities. So here to solve this one, and this is an or. This is this or that problem. So the top equation, I'm going to start by subtracting 3 from both sides. I get negative 10b is less than or equal to negative 40. One little wrinkle here, just as a reminder, I wanted to include this problem as a reminder. I need to here divide both sides by negative 10 to get rid of that negative 10 by the b. When you divide or multiply by a negative number when you're solving an inequality, make sure to flip the sign. If you'd like a little more details on why that is, video below that will go into the details, but just a reminder, always do that. So I'm dividing by a negative 10, so I get b is, flip that sign, greater than or equal to 4. Second problem down here, there's number 1, there's number 2. Second problem down here, I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And I get 3b is less than or equal to negative 15. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. I am dividing a negative number by 3, but the 3 is not negative, so I do not flip the sign. This leaves me b is less than or equal to negative 5. Now I have my two inequalities that I can graph, and this is an or. The first one, b is greater than or equal to 4. So it is a solid circle at 4 and going to the right. Second one, b is less than or equal to negative 5. That's a solid circle at negative 5 going to the left. Since it's an or, it's any number that appears on either number line. So my final answer that I submit is going to have a closed circle at negative 5 going to the left and a closed circle at 4 and going to the right. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.